So do I do the GV? So welcome again, everyone. Thank you for being there for this penultimate so far uh, metaphysics, meta metaphysics of science seminar. Today, I have the pleasure to welcome uh, Mark Wischrein from the High Wisch Heine University of Dusseldorf, who will talk to us about relative, meta, uh, relative properties of meta based system. Thank you very much for being there. You have one hour to speak. Uh, it's currently 20 past two, so please applaud us. Well, many thanks for the invitation, for having me here, and for the kind introduction. So as you said, uh, my, my talk's um, uh, topic is the problematic properties of better best systems. And here's what I'm going to do. I first introduce or remind you of David Lewis's account of laws of nature, which is known under the name best systems account. Now there are variations of that best systems account uh, called better best systems account, one variation of it. And I will introduce that better best system account as well. And it's especially, it has been invented, especially for the special sciences and not for the fundamental sciences, as, as you, uh, Lewis did. Um, there's one crucial change from Lewis to the better best system, and that is that where Lewis had perfectly natural properties in his system, the uh, advocates of the better best system, they think that any sets of predicates or properties would do. We don't need the perfectly natural properties. We can take the properties the current sciences talk about, for example, and there might be a mismatch to the perfectly natural properties if you still believe in them, that they exist. There is trouble, however. Um, it's, it's not as easily done as said uh, to take those properties and go along with them, these other properties of the special sciences. And I want to highlight what is problematic and offer some solutions. Um, although uh, there, there will be remaining trouble. Okay. So that's, the, that's the, um, the program for today. As I said, I start with Lewis's best system account, just to remind us what the basics are. Um, the metaphysical background, the metaphysical background of Lewis's uh, system idea is Humean supervenience. So again, what is meant by Humean supervenience? Lewis states that all there is to the world is a vast mosaic of local matters of particular fact, just one bit of thing and then another. That's basically the Humean bit of it. So you have one event and then another event, but there are no necessary connections in, in the world. There's no modality in the world as, as such, at least not at the fundamental level. That's what's behind this statement. For short, we have an arrangement of properties, and that is all there is. And with properties, Lewis here means perfectly natural properties. He believes nature is equipped with her very own properties, the perfectly natural properties. And there's this arrangement of properties in the world, and that's what the vast mosaic is, what it consists of. There's no difference without a difference in the arrangement of properties. All else supervenes on that. That means all macroscopic objects, for example, are at the very end just patterns of properties within that mosaic. So here's a mosaic. Uh, it's, it's one by Ai Weiwei, the, the Chinese um, artist. This is Lego. These are Lego bricks, uh, tiny little Lego bricks, and that's a mosaic. And the picture that this dragon we see, and we see also Ai Weiwei wearing his fuck pullover here, um, protesting against uh, Chinese politics. And uh, uh, what we see, the dragon we see here supervenes, of course, on the uh, Lego bricks. Now, how do the laws supervene? Everything supervenes on this, on this mosaic, so how do the laws supervene? And here Lewis says the following. Suppose you knew everything about the distribution of perfectly natural properties in space-time. Uh, you know everything about the mosaic, you know where green, red, and so on is placed, to, to go back to the metaphor of, the, of, the, of a real mosaic. So, but here properties are distributed in space-time, and you knew everything about their distribution. Now you, now you organize your knowledge in various competing deductive systems that mention only predicates which refer to perfectly natural properties. So your language in which you summarize the whole system, the whole distribution, should be a language phrased in perfectly natural predicates referring to those, to those properties. Now there are many ways in which you can um, uh, uh, systematize uh, your knowledge. I come back to that. And there's a best system, uh, best way how to do it. And that best system contains the laws in the, in the following way. So you could summarize this. 
uh, JPEG, for example, is a compression algorithm on, on visual, on, on pictures. And what JPEG does is, for example, identify areas of the same color. So instead of saying, here's green, here's green, here's green, and so on, JPEG would say, look, in this area, um, X times Y, there's, there are green bits, and so you compress your knowledge. Or you could say, here's symmetry. Sym think of symmetry, symmetry laws as well as a counterpart. Here's a symmetry axis. So what goes on here is, is they are just narrow. That would be a way to compress your knowledge here. So different ways to compress your knowledge um, of, of a mosaic like, like that. Back to the best system, Lewis's best system. In short, a true contingent generalization is a law of nature if and only if it appears as an axiom or theorem in the one deductive system that amongst all the competing systems achieves the best balance of simplicity, strength, and fit. Again, there are many ways you can summarize a mosaic, um, but there are shorter ways and longer ways. There are more informative ways and less informative ways. And if you balance information, that is strength, and the simplicity of your uh, system, um, then take the one system that balances these, uh, these virtues in the in best way, and I leave out, out, out fit for reasons of gravity. Here, uh, these virtues are spelled out again. To have strength is to bear a great deal of information or content about the world. To be simple is to state everything in a concise way, and fit um, uh, is about the is, is about probabilistic laws, but I will uh, leave, leave that that parameter out. Okay, just as an example for different systems, current physics might be a very good, well competing system, um, but maybe it's not about perfectly natural properties. Maybe we aren't there yet, or will never be. We we don't know. Um, it certainly wins against Newtonian physics. I, I guess I would guess. Um, which might win against the one-liner. You could say, hey, here's, here's my systematization of the world. E equals mc squared. That is wonderfully simple, right? It's just a one-liner, but it's not very strong because it just talks about masses and energy, and that's it. But it leaves out a lot of information. So that, that will not be a winning system. Or you have a gigantic lookup table where you uh, uh, precise, but point by point, which natural properties instantiated there. But that's very strong because you have each and every point, um, but it's not very simple. So it loses on the simplicity side. So these systems here, maybe physics is still the, the best, but it's not the overall best because in Lewis we do metaphysics, so we are this omniscient perspective. We really know everything and the distribution of the natural. Properties. I don't know why I have this again. So it's Lewis. <laughs> we can conceive of Lewis's best system analysis as the following function: um, the function which yields the laws of nature of a world in the following in the following sense. D is the distribution of perfectly natural properties P in a world W. Different worlds, different laws, because the distribution of Properties is different there. So D is a distribution of perfectly natural properties in within a world. And we use, of course, our own world because we're interested in the laws of nature of our own world. And this function um, is, of course, adhering to the virtues, simplicity, strength, and fit. And it has as output the best system, the best way to um, uh, talk about the, this distribution, the shortest, simplest, most informative, etc., and so that uh, the axioms of that system then will be the laws we can take as the output of this function straight away. The, the laws. Okay. Now, um, yeah, the, the function of course takes simplicity, strength, and fit as the mechanism of how to spit out the the, the laws. That's basically the Lewisian system. I I could. Stop here for a moment, just in case you're not that familiar with Lewis's system and have questions for clarification at that point. If that's not the case, I continue straight away with what the better best system does differently from the Lewisian system. And we can 
see this in, a, in an easy way, in the best way, in looking at the, in that function, to, to the, because the function is slightly different for the better best system. The idea behind the better best system uh, analysis is this, launch independently best system analysis for different choices of fixed sets of predicates and properties. So drop, you may drop the assumption that nature herself is equipped with perfectly natural properties, just drop them, and look at different sciences, biology, for example, chemistry, etc. Take their properties, or take the biological properties, take the chemical properties and or predicates, and use them as the, uh, the basic building blocks of what you're going to systematize. That's the, that's the idea. So for the physical properties, separately for the chemical properties, separately for biology, <laughs> economically, psychological, depends on how, how high you want to go and how, uh, whether you believe that there are economical laws or psychological laws or, or not. But for chemistry and biology, it sounds quite right that there are certain kinds of regularities at least which could be legitimately called laws. So um, back to the, I'll leave that out. Back to this, to, this, uh, uh, to this formula, to this function. For Lewis, P was fixed. P is perfectly natural properties. And C, I, I, I haven't got a C in here yet. C are the criteria, simplicity, strength, and, and fit, by which this function looks for the, for the best systematization. Now, what the better best system does is make P also a variable. For Lewis, it was a constant, it was just perfectly natural. But make it a variable, and you may also have as a variable the criteria by which this function does its job. Okay. Now, um, again, what does the better, the better best system analysis do? Well, first of all, choose a set P of properties freely, as you wish. And you, you, might, you might choose the ones of physics, the ones of chemistry, the ones of, of biology. But once chosen, fix it and put it into the function. Um, so it's, it's a variable first, but you put a, a, a fixed set of properties in there for P. Then look for the distribution of these properties in your world. So if you focus on chemistry, you will look for chemical for the distribution of chemical properties in this world, and you would be blind to physical properties and also to, to biological ones. You will not be looking at human beings. That's not your vocabulary if you look for, for chemistry. So you look for the distribution of molecules. If biology is your vocabulary, you will be looking for elephants and human beings and tigers and, and so on, and trees, etc. Et um, okay. Now, there is the possibility to also um, temper with the criteria. And uh, there's a, a new, better, best system idea uh, coming from, um, for example, Siegfried Jagg, um, Christian Löw, and uh, Mike Hicks, etc., who think that we should also choose different kinds of criteria. And they launched the, the idea of a, a pragmatic best uh, system. Um, but I leave that as, aside. Um, for, for today. So um, here are potential candidates for chemistry, the law of constant proportions or the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium for biology, but these are just examples aside. And here I have a list of proponents of the better best system idea uh, and here of the pragmatic best system idea, just to have mentioned them. And there's a nice volume out last year uh, by Hicks, Jarg and, and Löw uh, human laws for human agents and a lot of pragmatist um, uh, articles on the pragmatist best system um, account are in, in this in this book in this collection of, of essays of, of, um, of papers. Okay, I said there's trouble for the BBSA. It sounds so nice. Yeah, choose your own set of predicates or properties and do the Lewisian stuff just as as Lewis did. That's the only change you need to do. But that's not so. Um, there are plenty of problems. I skip these pro problems. There are problems with the properties themselves, but I leave those problems out. I want to focus today on 
sets of properties, which is problematic. Um, there's a demarcation problem, uh, there's a problem with unity and hierarchy, and finally there's uh, inter-system friction, I, I skipped this apparently too, uh, but there's a problem with scientific progress. So I will focus on these three problems in the discussion, or, or later we, we, we can go into the other problems as, as well. But for, for today, just these three problems. Let's start with the synchronic trouble, um, demarcation problem. Choosing a set of properties for separate sciences, physics, chemistry, and biology, is unfortunately not so straightforward as it seems to be. Why not? Ooh, I don't know why this happened, sorry for that. We have to go through the slides again. Um, but that should be fairly quick. Here we are again. So why is it not a straightforward matter? Well, if we look at biology as our example, or well, let me start differently. Of course, biology is a human-made science. And of course, maybe in nature, there's no big demarcation to chemistry anyway. So maybe there is no real distinction or no real demarcation between biology, chemistry, and physics, and so on, um, which is shown also by, uh, by subject areas like biochemistry or biophysics, there we can see that there's, of course, they are, of course, entangled. Um, so I'm, I'm not at all uh, uh, um, proposing here that there is biology and it's totally, so that's not what I'm, I'm saying. But as a human enterprise, we do have biology and as a human enterprise, we keep it kind of distinct from, from chemistry. So if we want to look at biological laws, uh, uh, only then this trouble arises or then these, these difficulties arise. If you say from the beginning on, look, this distinction is any, any way void, I don't want to look at it, fair enough, okay. It's just if you want to go for, for, for that idea. Now, if you do, then you would want laws like this in biology. Humans cannot survive much longer than 10 days without water, H2O plus certain isotonic salts. Um, and this is a toy example, of course, but look at neurobiology, at how when synapses fire, you will have to talk about electricity, of electric conduct, of, of uh, salts again, and uh, liquids, etc. So <coughs> there are real, real life, um, real biological uh, laws, not, not just this toy example. But let's focus on, on a toy example for, um, to, make it, to make it simpler. Now, here we can see, if, if you want to get such kind of laws in biology, you need also chemical and physical vocabulary. So you cannot just focus on bi biological predicates. You need to stick in some physical properties and predicates as well. Okay, easy. Let's take them on board. Would be the simple idea. But that won't work. Why does that not work? If you do a best systematization and you have NH NACL on board and you have water H2O on board, your best system might be one which has as an axiom salt dissolves in water because it's, it, it has a lot of informational content. It is very strong. It talks about all NH, uh, sorry, NACL and, and, and water. So this might well appear as an axiom in your best system. And suddenly, what is supposed to be the best system of biology yields you chemical or physical laws, which you did not want to have in the biological system. So on the one hand, you need to stick in physical properties. On the other hand, there's the danger that your system comes up with physical laws, which you don't want as biological laws. So there has to be some kind of amendment uh, to the function, how the function works, how the function gives you the best system of biology and chemistry and so on. And that's something which has had been overlooked by um, BBSA pro proponents. It seemed to work so nicely, but it, it just doesn't. So we have to put in um, something more, further mechanisms into our function. Right? Otherwise, we get non-biological rules. Here's a first idea. 
or here's a, a first filter we have to implement. Let the function uh, assign by fiat zero strength to any regularity that mentions no properties of the target size. So this is really by brute force. Just tell the function, okay, if we are dealing with bio biology and we want for biological properties, the laws that mention biological properties, don't count as strength, as informational content, those sentences, those, those regularities that have no biological properties in them. So NH, uh, sorry, I always say NH, NACL dissolves in water might be mentioned in the system, but it gets zero strength. It doesn't contribute to strength. So a system that has only physical regularities in it has zero strength, so it won't be a winning system. You can gain only strength points, and so be a good competitor within the com uh, competition, if you have biological regularities in there, by which I mean regularities that mention at least one biological property. Okay, we need a second filter. We need a second filter. This deals with, with strengths. It's a strength filter, so that physical laws don't gather strength for the system. Here's a second thing we need to look at, and that's a simplicity filter, so to speak. It could still be that pure physical regularities enter the system, um, they get zero strength, okay, but still they contribute to simplicity because they are kind of bridge laws between the biological laws. So it might still be the case, despite the first rule, that a system wins, which has some physical axioms still in it, because it contributes as bridge laws to the overall simplicity of the system. So we have to have a simplicity filter as well and say, if that should be the case, if a system is very high up with pure, and maybe a winning system, then we still have to weed them out and say only the axioms theorems of the winning system that do uh, uh, contain biological predicates count as biological laws. Again, by brute force, we have to write that into the function as a mechanism in order to, uh, for, for the function to yield just biological laws, i.e. those statements which contain at least one biological predicate. I would hope that these brute force amendments to the function do the job. Maybe they don't, uh, then it's just a suggestion. So maybe they don't, then the worse for the, for the better best system idea, but that epicycle has to be added to the competition rules. Otherwise, it's bankrupt from the start, right? So there has to be done something. That's my suggestion. Um, if another amendment works, good. If no amendment works, that's really bad. Then the best, better best system is pointless it doesn't yield what it wants to yield. So that was synchronic trouble in the sense of that's right now, right here for one point in time, uh, a, a pro problematic. Is another problem, synchronic problem? The better best system idea creates a kind of disunity amongst the sciences. If it says, do your job for biological laws, do your job for chemical laws, etc., they seem to be totally different. But that's not something we experience in, in, in sciences. As I said, there are these uh, subjects like biochemistry, etc., which also show us that there's a huge overlap. Plus also, um, I think uh, we, you don't have to be an eliminativist or reductionist straight, straight away, but I guess still everyone acknowledges that uh, living beings are composed of chemical molecules, which are composed of um, atomic particles and subatomic particles. So there is some kind of hierarchy in the sciences and some kind of unity in the sciences because we are all made up of physical stuff in the very end. So this picture, uh, the better the system by itself draws is too disunified. So how do we get more unity in, into it? And here are, I mean, one type of, of unity we have, we have already achieved in solving the first problem, namely in that we acknowledge that the biological competition had to mention physical properties as well as chemical properties. 
So we have these nested circles of property sets. The, the, the property set we use for a biological competition or a biological better best system analysis contains some chemical properties and some physical properties. By this we have, and the chemical ones will have to, to mention also some physical ones. Okay? The physical ones can stay by themselves because note that's that's uh, not only a unification, it makes science more unified because we take properties of the other sciences, but it's also hierarchy building. Because if we want only the physical laws, we will not mention biological or chemical ones. If we want the chemical laws, we will not mention the biological ones, but only uh, physical <coughs> ones. And so you get a hierarchy uh, as much as a unity, unity and hierarchy at the, at the same time. Um, it's, uh, so this, this picture is a bit confusing because, of course, it, it looks as if in the chemical circle are also the biological ones, but I, it, it has to be built successfully, right? So the chemical ones also introduce the, the physical ones where the physical ones stay by themselves, and the biological ones then mention all three of, all three of them. So by solving the first problem, we have solved also the, the problem that uh, there seems to be a disunity of sciences. Here's another, uh, here's another uh, um, uh, thought on, on unification, but that is separate. This consideration is extrinsic to the better best system analysis, so I will keep it brief. Um, it seemed, or it seemed to be, to me, the case, uh, I tell you, I give you a counterexample to that, a possible counterexample to it. But it seemed to me to be the, the case that special science laws are catarisparinous laws, i.e., they have exceptions. Um, so, hemoglobin globin binds, H, uh, binds uh, oxygen. If you have sickle cell anemia, less so, or not any, anymore. So there are to, to biological or to uh, to yeah to biological medical laws there are exceptions as, as as we know. If you want to explain these exceptions, you either stay at the same level or you go one level further down. To explain what sickle cell anemia is, you look at the molecule and you find out that something is wrong with the molecule. I can't remember what it, what it is. Um, but so that it doesn't bind any more H2O, uh, sorry, uh, O2, uh, or at least less, less so. So you go a level further down. You go from the medical or biological level down to the chemical level. Sometimes you stay at the same level, but you never go upwards. You wouldn't explain a failure of a chemical law by biology, or even less so for I guess that fundamental physical laws are not catarisparous, but they are absolute. But let's say some um, higher order physical laws. If they have exceptions, you will not look for a biological reason. You, you stay same level or you go fundamental physics. That seemed to be uh, the case. So we have, we have again uh, a unification or a hierarchy building in the explanation of possible um, of possible exceptions to catarist power laws. Here's, an, here's a counterexample. This is my dog, and uh, when I gave this, this talk at, uh, at, at Oxford, uh, Timothy Williamson had the following counterexample, thereby insulting my dog, and also his dog, or his daughter's dog, I can't remember. He said, um, look at a golden retriever. They are highly dysfunctional dogs. <laughs> so here's the insult to, to golden retrievers. Highly dysfunctional in the sense that, of course, they are, that's a bred, they are a bred race of, of, of dogs, uh, and they, they wouldn't be able to survive in nature at, at all. You need to feed them, you need to go to the doctors, etc. And since they are bred by social conventions, by our aesthetic conventions, aesthetics or social conventions had an influence as an exception to evolution, for, for, ex, for example. We temper with, with evolution. So the laws of evolution, for example, have an exception with golden retrievers, um, but not one from below, 
but from above, social convention, aesthetic conventions. If that is true, my hierarchy building by exceptions doesn't work. I, I try to fix it and say uh, evolution works with uh, adaptation to the environment. We keep it that abstract. And if the environment has social influences, fair enough, but we keep it abstract. We don't talk about where it comes from. We just say that there are uh, uh, different uh, environmental influences wh wherever they come from. But I'm, I'm not happy with that solution. So maybe this is not a way of, of unifying the, the laws. Here's one uh, uh, way of unifying them, um, uh, of hierarchy building. And I try to keep that brief because that can we can go into uh, lots of detail here, which um, is, is maybe not necessary. Namely, I think that special science laws emerge from more fundamental laws. What do I mean by that? Nothing magical, right? What I mean by emergence is the following. Um, behind the ideas is, is this, a quote by Cohen and Callender, I guess we all believe. We have reasons to believe. Uh, if we have reason to believe anything in science, it's that macroscopic entities are constituted by microscopic ones and their relations. And let's take that as a, as a background assumption. Here's how, here's how uh, higher order laws supervene on more fundamental laws. By emergence, I mean two things. On the one hand, the laws are autonomous. There has to be a the degree of autonomy, otherwise it wouldn't be emergence, but reduction. Yeah? Then there's, there's no separate level, so to speak. So there has to be autonomy. But emergence is such that there has to be also dependence. They emerge from somewhere. They are, just, they are not just there. So there's de both dependence and autonomy. Now, it's, it's hard to, to juggle autonomy and dependence. They, they seem, there seems to be friction between autonomy and, and dependence. Right? But here's how it works. Here's how the laws are. On the one hand, the higher order laws, higher science laws, are on the one hand autonomous, but on the other hand still dependent. And taking both together, I, I say they are emergent from the lower level laws. The autonomy is here. The better best system analysis mechanism decides autonomously per predicate set which statements are laws of that scientific realm. If you have a predicate set, you look for the distribution of those properties, of the according properties, and then do a best system analysis. Why are not listening to physics at all when, let's say, we are concerned with bio? Only in so far as you have uh, physical properties in there, fair enough. But you are not concerned with the physical laws. You leave them aside. They don't influence or inform your best system analysis. So in this way, autonomous, you have the distribution of those properties, and you do your best system analysis just for that level without listening to fun more fundamental laws. Whatever the more fundamental laws might be, they are not consulted in the finding process of the less fundamental laws. So we have that kind of autonomy. Um, but we have also dependence, and here's uh, how we have that dependence. Let this be a regularity uh, and one to which normicity is conferred by the better best system analysis. So we have a regularity, all Fs are Gs, uh, within a better best system analysis. It's an axiom within the best system, so it's a, it's a law. It's com it has it got the law status by the better best system analysis. But note that the properties F and G will supervene on the properties of the parts of the Fs and Gs. We agreed with that statement by Cohen and Callender that everything macroscopic is built of, out of parts, and those parts will have properties. Okay, so the properties F and G, which figure in this uh, higher level law, will somehow supervene on the parts of the properties and uh, uh, of the parts. So, that this is a table is, is such, is, is uh, this is a table because there are certain parts assembled table wise. And if again parts, the same parts with the same properties are again assembled in that way, 
you again have a tail. In this sense, the higher order properties supervene on the properties and relations of the parts. So have those parts again, stick them together in the very same way, you again have a table. If you want to change this table to a chair, you have to disassemble the parts and put them into different relations. So in this way, properties supervene on the properties of the parts of these objects. Now the parts, of course, and their properties, their properties especially, will adhere to certain laws of that, of that level. I mean, in the very end, you have to, you have to uh, assemble atoms in a certain table way. <laughs> yeah. uh, you have to assemble atoms table-wise in, in the very end. And those atoms will adhere to physical laws. Okay. So you can't assemble them in any way you like. You, you can only do so according to the laws of physics. You have to um, listen to the laws of, what well, you cannot but listen to the laws of physics. So the, the parts and the properties of the parts will adhere, will, will subscribe to certain laws. Yeah? Not any distribution of these properties is possible because they are physical laws. Okay? You cannot do that as, as you please. Uh, like with Lego bricks, you, you cannot assemble them as you like. Uh, you have to, uh, I mean, they have these pins and, and so on, so you can't, can't stick Lego as you like. So they have, they, the parts <coughs> adhere to laws as, as well. Um, and note, um, and here I can go into uh, any level of, of detail. I have some more slides, but I want to skip them. So let me, let me try to put everything together on, on this slide. Now, if we know that these higher order properties supervene on the properties of the parts Fs and Gs have, and those more fundamental properties adhere to certain laws, then those more fundamental laws will push around the parts and properties on that fun more fundamental level in a certain way. These, these parts and properties will listen to these laws, so not anything is possible. They will move around, so to speak, according to these lower level laws. So that on the higher level, Fs and Gs are, so to speak, piggybacking on the movements of what the parts do. So Fs and Gs, because they supervene on the parts and their properties, and they move along according to laws, also Fs and Gs will be dragged along, so to speak, piggybacking on those parts and their properties. So Fs and Gs will not behave randomly, but they will be dragged along uh, with the properties underlying, underneath. And in such a way that this comes out as a regularity, or at least as a Catarist paradox regularity. So in this sense, so together with one, one and two together, the regularity, all FSRGs, follows from the laws amongst the more fundamental properties in their distribution. Because the more fundamental laws move around, the Fs are supervening on those, so they are moving a, 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 along with what the lower uh, level properties do. Look at the, do I have the mosaic again? Now I would need the mosaic again. S suppose it's, it's not a, it's not Ai Weiwei's artwork, it's a film, it's a movie. So the, the pixels, the color pixels, move around or shine, uh, via certain regularities, the, the specifications of the program, when there should be a red pixel and a green pixel, etc. So the, the movie we see, which is the higher level, the FSMGs, let's say cats and dogs are playing around in this movie, and uh, so the cats and dogs, of course, supervene on the pixels. So they move around like the, as, as the pixels move. And that's the case with Fs and, and Gs, which are higher level properties. And so also the higher level laws supervene what, what regularities there are between Fs and Gs depends on what regularities there are for the, for the parts of these, these things. 
So, and, and this is uh, this is spelled out here in, in any detail, and in the paper it's even more detailed. But I think the main message, um, I, I got the main message across, um, and go straight to this cautionary notes. No, yeah, maybe this again. So the regularity supervenes, or this FRGs supervenes as a mere true regularity on the fundamental laws, right? It's a regularity because the P properties move around in that and that way. It's not yet a law, it's just a regu true regularity. Hence the dependence. This regularity, whether it's, whether it's a regularity at all, depends on what the parts do. If it comes out as a regularity, we only just have a regularity so far. F's are G's becomes a law only because it also figures in a best system analysis. Hence the autonomy of the law status, not of the regularity status. The regularity, that it's a true regularity, is made true by the underlying property distribution. That it's a law is made true by the best system analysis on the higher level. And so I think I have both. I have autonomy and I have dependence so that it's justified to call it an emergent prop, an emergent law. The, the, the higher order laws are emergent laws. Okay, so um, <coughs> we have argued the, the better best system analysis seems to have the sciences completely separate from each other, where we think that there's a kind of hierarchy and definitely a unity. And I had three arguments why we get the unity back and also a hierarchy back. I said they are nested property sets already. Um, then I have this direction of explanations for exceptions, which has nothing to do with better best systems, but that might be a possibility. But there are maybe counter examples to two, though, so I'm not as more sure about two, and there's this emergence of higher order laws as I just described. So we have unity and not anarchy, but we have a, a hierarchy rather than anarchy. <coughs> last point, I, I hope I still have time for my, my last point, otherwise we could... Okay, so um, all this was synchronic trouble in the, the sense of we can uh, look at the state of the universe right now and we get into this, this trouble. There's also diachronic trouble. And the diachronic trouble is scientific progress. Um, because, I mean, here's, here's, a, here's an innocent, innocent in so far as it doesn't do damage to the better best system analysis. Here's an innocent development, an unproblematic advance of science. Namely, scientific progress in the special sciences has been made when new laws are discovered or old alleged laws are corrected. Fine, that, that's the epistemic scientific uh, perspective. We discover new laws about biology, um, uh, uh, pre-Darwinian times didn't know evolutionary laws or with Mendel some, we advanced to, towards these laws. And now we have evolutionary biology. So we discover new biological laws and we might correct uh, what Darwin said and we have newer accounts of, of it. So far, so good. That's, that's fine. That's just scientific progress for um, the metaphysical side of it. Of course, we have the best system analysis. The best system analysis is an idea, of course. We do it in science approximately, but the Lewisian idea is this omniscient viewpoint. So there might be a mismatch still of the idea with, with our scientific progress, but there's no friction bet bet between the two. This just says that we are on our way to discover the best, uh, the best system, so to speak. But here's a problem. The problem is that some scientific progress doesn't concern uh, discover, uh, to discover new laws or to correct alleged old laws, but we discover new taxonomy, we discover new properties. So uh, uh, Higgs boson, to be a Higgs boson, wasn't a property available to us a hundred years ago. This is new, so we have new vocabulary 
and we have new properties picked out by that vocabulary. In other words, we constantly get new property sets in the course of sciences. But for best system analysis, we always have to have a fixed property set which we put into the analysis and it spits out the laws for the distribution of those properties. Then wait an another 50 years or 100 years and you will have in chemistry and also in physics and in biology a different property set and do your best system analysis with that. But now you get into Kuhnian, Feyerabendian incommensurability problems. You have a, suddenly a, a, a best system for this property set and then one for this property set, but you can't compare them. You can only compare systems written in the same vocabulary. A different vocabulary looks at a different mosaic. Right? It looks at a different distribution. So it's, it's not really, you can't say this is better, this is worse. You enter into pragmatic decisions here. So that's diachronic trouble for the best system. It doesn't capture it, so to speak. So the <coughs> better best system's proponents will have to say, fair enough, there are these separate different uh, best systems, and we have to make pragmatic choices um, which one to take. That would be uh, a way to, to, deal with, to deal with it because we can't make this interlanguage uh, competitions. That's, that's impossible. There are paradigm shifts, like cool fire up and uh, incommensurability problems we, we get here, or Carnapian linguistic frameworks. We, we jump from one to the other without them being really comparable to, to each other. Now, you either might think that this is a problem, um, uh, or you can welcome it and say, well, that's a way how to spell out the cool firearm idea in a more precise way. Now we know what it, what it means uh, in, in terms of better best systems. You could also welcome it and say it's a, it's a, it, it makes precise the idea of, of cool and, and firearm um, in, in, in our terms. Uh, that, that's a, it's a way to, to look at this uh, as, as well. Um, but I'm a bit more skeptical and I find that, that more troublesome for the, for the best system analysis. Oops, sorry, again, I, I pressed the wrong button. Okay, and here are solutions, if, if you find it troublesome. Here, here's a possible solution. Uh, very lower has also a variant of, of the Lewisian idea. I don't want to get into it deeply, but uh, the idea is look at physics, at really at, at the scientific enterprise physics, okay. and look at the ideal endpoint of physics. The vocabulary of the ideal endpoint of physics is the vocabulary you should stick into a best system analysis and it gives you the laws of nature. That's very, it's a cartoon version of, of, of Barry's idea, but to keep it brief. So it's, it's, it's an ideal endpoint of an actual science. It's not like Lewis, he is nature and her perfectly natural properties. It's metaphysically much more skeptical, this, this view. It looks at a, at, at, a, at a real science, but somehow projects the the future of that science. So an ideal endpoint of physics, the properties that are mentioned then in future, take them and make your best system analysis. And it'll give you the, the laws of physics. That's, that's the idea behind Barry Lower's package deal account. Now, we could do that. That's what I just said. We can do that with chemistry and biology and uh, etc. As, as well. We could borrow Barry's uh, idea and uh, say, look, okay, um, we project biology into the future and the, the vocabulary we have then is the one we put into a best system analysis and these are the real laws of biology which come out of that in the future. So that would be, uh, that would be an idea. Um, I skip the properties mix for reasons of time 
and come to a summary already. Um, we have noted that the best system the better best system analysis isn't as innocent as it might have seemed. Just take different property sets, put it in, and that's it. No, you have to take enlarged property sets, I think, yeah, for the demar demarcation problem, add properties to sets, but also to further competition rules. We have to, to add physical properties and chemicals proper, chemical properties to the biological ones in order to get what we want, the biological laws. But once you have done that, once you have added those properties into the biological set, you have to have further competition rules. Otherwise, you get physical laws when you wanted biological laws, as I, as I described. So that's an epicycle that needs, needs to be uh, implemented into the MetaVest system analysis. Then I talked about unity and hierarchy, because the idea as such, the MetaVest systems account uh, idea as such, leaves the sciences strangely disunified. And I have uh, given some ideas how to unify them again via this supervenience postulates of F and G properties on the part properties, etc., and via these nested uh, property sets. This, this is unifying and hierarchy, even hierarchy building for the, for the sciences. And hierarchy there is, uh, even if you are not a reductionist and you don't want to put forward that bio biology totally reduces to, to physics, still there's this kind of, of hierarchy in that biological entities are built out of physical entities, but not vice versa. Okay, and then we have this problem with scientific progress, um, because uh, new property sets and old property sets are incommensurable, incommensurable uh, and so we have this, this problem. Which systems are the laws of nature? And an idea is to look at the idea endpoint of, of, of science there. Okay, I have some additional remarks, but I, I skipped them. Um, just see what they are. Yeah, okay, I, I skip them. That's and leave it there. Okay, thank you. Oh, that would be great if we could have one minute. Uh, sure. I, great. I
Perfect. Uh, I don't see anything about people. So uh, and these people are not there. Yeah. Coffee? It's a coffee machine. Yeah. The coffee machine has been repaired this morning. Oh, nice. Oh. It was missing the It was broken. We discovered that in two years we had four. 40,000 coffees, and now the machine just broke. Wow, 40,000. Uh, wow. <laughs>
Yes, if, if you buy this kind of supervenience idea, uh, then, then it's, it, it should be more aligned. There, I, I'm not sure there might still be counterexamples because um, um, here, here's a way in which, in which there could still be a counterexample. As I said, uh, the, the regularities, the higher order regularities, definitely supervene on the lower level regularities but not their nomicity status. Nomicity they get only via a best system account. Um, yeah. uh, and, and so uh, which regularities you pick as the laws depends on purely on that level. And only the laws, not any regularity, enters counterfactual reasoning. So you leave out certain regularities and you focus, you highlight, you make more important certain regularities, but not others. And there might be a, a possibility of things getting awkward because you, you, you highlight only some of the regularities, but not others. You, you can drop other regularities in going to the next possible world. The other regularities don't matter for simplicity, uh, sorry, for um, um, similarity, for similarity measurements, they don't matter. Because you drop them, you could get a mismatch. So it's still problematic. And that seems to be a good counterexample, that it's possible that you won't get just yeah. from the shown counterfactuals. Yeah. 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 So I, I agree. Okay. I, I cannot but, but agree that this is a problematic issue for the best system account, which I haven't mentioned in this in this talk, but it's it's an it's a known problem. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I, I really uh, liked you, your, your, the way that you uh, show how uh, higher level properties emerge from lower level properties and also the autonomy of the of load with respect to uh, a load at a, at a more fundamental level. But I have two, uh, two remarks, more specific and more general. More specific uh, is about the uh, diachronic uh, uh, problem of your, of your view. Uh, <clears throat> you say that uh, if there is a, uh, simply an improvement of no laws to the evolution of science, uh, that's not a problem because you seem to suppose that there are no new properties that are coming in, in the picture, but that's not true because sometimes you know you add uh, some new terms to laws. For example, you the, the perfect uh, perfect gas law, you know, and other laws. You you add new terms with new properties, so you can have uh, new properties which appear uh, even though uh, uh, the. Uh, <clears throat> Even though the, uh, the, 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 the progress of science uh, uh, consists uh, in uh, uh, improving or correcting uh, all, the, all the laws. So, this was a specific remark. Uh, but yeah. on the other hand, I don't think that uh, uh, the. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. I don't think that uh, the fact that there are new properties that uh, are uh, discovered, you know. By the evolution of science, uh, creates a problem for your for your account but because after all we don't know everything. And uh, uh, well, Lewis didn't claim uh, he's the best uh, uh, account uh, system. He didn't claim that he, he knew all the properties and all the well, quote unquote natural properties. When you deal with the theories that you have and the properties that are mentioned in those theories. And then uh, you apply, you know, the, the Leibniz criteria. And then, you know, if you think that these criteria are correct, uh, then uh, they pick up the laws. Then uh, you have the you have the laws. And then we are fallible. You know, there are things that we don't yeah. know. And then so uh, there are new properties uh, which appear in the evolution of science. And so I I, I don't see how this is a serious problem for me on your account. Thanks. Thanks for these these two points. Um, I, I I agree with with both of them. And, and, and let, but let me let me answer um, uh, again, maybe slightly different from my answers within the talk. Um, when I said that it's un, an un, un, unproblematic advance is if we discover new laws with old vocabulary, then it's unproblematic. 
But you're right, uh, often we discover new laws with new properties. But that's what I, I meant to uh, cover when I, I said that there are taxonomic scientific progress also. And that causes the, the, the trouble. Um, and with, with taxonomic progress, we also get uh, new laws in, written in new vocabulary. And at, at this point, I pointed out that this is problematic in so far as the old best system and the new best system cannot be compared well because they talk about different yeah. issues. But then you you turned to your general remark um, and said, look, or let, let, let me rephrase, rephrase it in my words. If we think that this is an epistemic um, enterprise, the BBSA uh, enterprise, then fair enough, yeah, we are fallible and we move from one system to another and the, uh, the newer one uh, appears to us to be better because it solves old problems we, we had with older vocabulary and the new system solves these, these problems. Uh, maybe it um, can do everything the old system could do, but more because it solves the older pro uh, systems, pro etc. So the, the usual um, answers to the Kuhnian firearms uh, 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 problems. And if we remain uh, on this epistemic level, Fair enough, we can go along with, with, with that. If we want to find out what are, metaphysically speaking, the laws of chemistry or the laws of biology, then this looks problematic. Then we have to say something like, we have to look at the ideal endpoint of these sciences. Uh, then we might have a chance that these are the laws of biology and not only um, the, the laws as far as our science progressed. So, um, but yeah, I, I see, uh, the, um, I totally see a, an epistemic perspective we can have here. David, you know, the moment, uh, but my most specific point uh, uh, is that, you know, you say that there is not this taxonomic problem uh, with the competition of taxonomies uh, uh, problem when there is a lot of, a order, no law, uh, is corrected. So when the law is corrected, then it could be corrected uh, by the addition of new properties. Yes, so, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know yeah. that in your presentation, yeah. you, you you shouldn't put that uh, that it is not problematic because if the if the correction includes the addition of new properties, then, yes, yeah, then yeah. In this case, uh, uh, <coughs> the. Uh, this case, well, you, yeah, you, yes. you, you ran into the same problem as uh, when there is a new uh, I, I, to I totally agree. This is too uh, uh, too short here. I, I should include it there. No, no, uh, for, uh, permit, me, uh, permit me, I have a... a, a well, you seem to suppose that uh, the uh, uh, Ubis account is it, broadly, broadly correct, but you, have you, well, you know, of course, the objections that have been made by several philosophers, by von Frasten, and Sosilos, and others, but you know, uh, uh, Lewis criterion of the best system. Yeah. Uh, like, you know, the, the simplicity, uh, empirical power, the balance, the best balance between the two. So it's... Fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. I mean, this is, uh, this is anyway, if at all, then only for the Lewisians. Uh, that, that's point totally taken, yeah? They are, they are problems for the original system, and uh, these are inherited for the best, uh, better best systems analysis, and also for the pragmatists. If you are not Humean, <laughs> for example, oh, all yeah, this is not for you. Uh, uh, that's you. that's for for sure. But I mean, uh, yes, we all have our presuppositions and have to start from from somewhere. So that's okay. that's a problem, but not my problem for today. <laughs> um, there's a question online. Um, I have a question linked to the issue of unity and scientific progress. How could we take uh, account of the emergence of new domains of science? A new domain could emerge with some properties belonging to previous scientific domains. At which point can, they, can we say that we have a new domain, another reformulation of older sets of properties? Since we've already accepted that new properties can emerge in the progress of science. Yeah, also a very good 
point. Um, I said at one point, uh, and maybe uh, not um, um, in, in de not, not in enough detail. Um, of of course, the the um, categorization, biology, chemistry, psychology, etc. That's that's a very human enterprise, and I I don't know whether the world really comes. Uh, in, uh, segmented into into these different uh, areas, it might be the case. I mean, think of um, um, Conway's Game of Life, this co computer pixels uh, uh, game, which um, Dennett uh, wrote wrote about uh, so, so much, and real patterns. And it it might be that that there are certain levels at which real patterns em emerge. That that could well be the case. But I'm not uh, bound. To, to it, and I could say this is an entire pragmatic choice. Um, and the the proponents of better best systems, they they could be happy to say, look, you can take any property set you you like and give it a, a name, call it schmiology or schmemistry or so. so. Does, doesn't doesn't matter. Take even take gruesome properties, group predicates, and have a best system run on them. That's that's fine, and so the really deflationary answer to that question is um, maybe nature or the world doesn't answer to that question. Um, there there aren't any there, there isn't a, a, a real natural hierarchy or separation, and that's pure pragmatics uh, could be. So that would be my my answer. But I should add. As a footnote, uh, this sounds extremely relativistic and constructivist, what I just said. But in a, in a very important way, it's not. Because once you have chosen your vocabulary, it's the world and nature that answers whether there are certain uh, regularities or not. Let's take very higher, high order uh, predicates and properties. Uh, furniture properties, chairs and tables, and so on. So in this room, it might be the case that for every table, there are two chairs. Now, chairs and tables, that's certainly human social construction categories. They are not natural whatsoever. But still, once we fix that vocabulary, once we say, look, it's still, we are still interested. We are a, a design, interior design company. So that's our important vocabulary. So far, so constructivist and relativist. But whether it's true that for each and every table in this room, there are two chairs, that's the world who answers to that. So it, once fixed, once the vocabulary is fixed, it's totally objective fact about the world and the world answers to it, whether that's the case or not, whether that's a regularity within this in this room, so it's it's not um, entirely uh, what what Lewis once called this lunacy that we can make up our laws as we want. That's not the case because once we have a vocabulary, the world answers to how these properties are distributed in in the world. But it's not a law. So, sorry, it's a regularity, but not a law for regularity. Yeah, uh, may, maybe we, we don't get laws by that, but, but, but mere regularities. That, that, that. But who knows? There's many laws about climate change. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> exactly. The the Only the omniscient being could answer whether they are fair to us. We can do a different systems of furnitures. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. You need yeah. a theory. It doesn't need a theory about chairs and tables. Yes, but you need a theory. Yeah, but Lewis has a very. Uh, Axiomatic version of theory, so we can axiomatize a lot of stuff. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Who uh, knows? Yeah. Yeah, do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 furniture is not. So I think it's not easy. Yeah, of course, it's... but uh, uh, furniture design, uh, they are, they have content, they, they, they have principles and so on. Uh, so yeah, so why would you not take that as laws? Yeah. Uh, Chair that you cannot sit on it is a piece of art, but maybe not a real chair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I didn't know that we turned into an aesthetics <laughs> talk and, and seminar. 
Yeah, but back, back to philosophy of science. <laughs> Just go back to the reason as to why we should uh, move from BSA. Uh, Lewis is a candidate to the BSA. The basic reasons. Uh, yeah, okay, so one, uh, there are two reasons come to, to my, three, three reasons come to my mind, maybe a fourth, once I get started. Uh, the first one is uh, purely metaphysical. If you don't uh, believe in natural, perfectly natural properties, you have to have a, an alternative. Um, and you have still to restrict your vocabulary, because remember, if you don't uh, have vocabulary restrictions and you go for an abundant nominalism, for example, then the Lewisian system doesn't work either, because you are plagued with gruesome properties and this F predicate, um, etc. Could go into to details, but these are technical problems the Lewisian system has, so that vocabulary sets have to be fixed. Um, and the Lewisian way to fix it was to uh, accept that nature has these uh, natural properties, and then we take the predicates that refer to those. Those, and the uh, the better best system accounts um, proponents um, said. Hey, hey, okay, we need to fix a vocabulary, but who says that's the natural property? So that's, that's, uh, that's one reason we could go better best system. Second reason is if you don't want to be as reductionist as Lewis is. For Lewis, there's, of, of course, there can be higher level laws, but they are in, in the very end, they are just Really, there are only the fundamental laws uh, which describe the distribution of the perfectly natural properties. But if you want to be less reductionist and also talk about the special science laws, then it's good to, to go onto, onto that level and have better the system accounts for chemistry, etc. etc. So, second reason. A third reason was um, which is not, it's not, in this, you don't have to go better this system, but for. For, for me to uh, think about that possibility, the reason was um, to see whether we can also get into Lewis um, the idea of Ceteris Paribus laws, of laws with exceptions. And it's, it's un, I think it's, it's a possibility that you have exceptions even on the fundamental level, and it can be shown, Braden Mitchell has a, a paper on that, and I have it in, in, in that Ceteris Paribus, book where uh, we show that it's a possibility for even Lewis's fundamental system to implement exceptions to laws. We show how that's, that's a possibility. But the, my primary goal was to have a Lewisian idea for special, sciences, special science laws where it's not only a theoretical option that they ha might have exceptions, they do have exceptions. And so uh, that was a reason to go um, better best system and, and have these higher order uh, predicates. So these three reasons come, come to mind. Thank you. Uh, I have a question uh, concerning the, the metaphysical or epistemological nature of the exercise. Uh, and maybe this is my confusion comes from the fact that I'm not Jungian at all. Uh, so maybe I have difficulty understanding the project. But, uh, um, so I get the the idea of Lewis, if you use natural properties, uh, why you would want your your laws to be the best system to explain them or to, to derive them. Um, but as soon as you go to just properties uh, that exist in current science or in science that we study, um, that's going to be a partially <coughs> epistemic project, as you suggested. Um, but then why still care about properties? Because it seems for me that in science, laws and properties hang together. They work together to, to give a good uh, explanatory uh, explanation, not of the properties, but of the observations and about certain actions that we as humans uh, engage in and yeah. other pragmatic yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. We don't care about these properties. They hang together with the laws we, certainly in physics, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that we we combine with them. So yeah. I very much like the idea of searching for best explanation or best systems, but not based on, on properties. If you are not, if your properties are not already the natural kinds, 
uh, uh, that that would be something we would want to explain. Yeah. But if they are merely the things that we at this moment accept as the things that work good in our theory, we seem to need also a best systems approach to 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 find the right terminology mm. rather than explain the the properties by yeah. the, the laws. I, I totally see your point, and uh, I, I can make it even worse. <laughs> it's, it's already quite bad, <laughs> but here here is a way in which we can make that problem even worse. Um, the, the properties as they appear in the special sciences are certainly not the quidistic categorical properties Lewis has in mind. No. Uh, being a living being, uh, let's say being a tiger, is certainly not a non-dispositional property. It's, it's a dispositional property. Being a tiger means that you uh, have, uh, that you are a predator, that you, uh, that you have, uh, that you are a mammal, etc. And these are certainly um, functional properties or dispositional properties. So these are properties that have, um, uh, to, uh, to say br briefly, they are laws ingrained into the property, so to speak, Dis because they are dispositional. They have a, they have a, um, a gnomic profile uh, within the property. So why would you need uh, a law saying that tigers are mammals? Because Tigers are mammals. It's, 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 it's within the property of being a tiger to be a, a mammal and to have a certain nomological profile already. So um, if you choose a biological property set, you have dispositional properties and the whole business of systematizing it is void. Why would you want to do that? It's, it's there already. It, mm -hmm. it specifies what tigers do regularly in, in the property of being a tiger. And this is the properties in themselves problem, which I skipped. <laughs> it's precisely it. Uh, they are not perfectly natural. Special science properties are not categorical, not point size instantiated, etc. And the solution to that is there is a solution to it. To it. Um, but with all those properties in concert, it adds to the BBSA becoming. Uh, uh, a weird idea, <laughs> to, to say the, to, to say the, the least. Um, um, you could say um, you could strip those properties of their dispositional profile. You could just, uh, a la Kripke and Putnam, say that for for the for the extension of tiger, what tiger to which entities creatures. Uh, the predicate tiger refers correctly to, you need the nomological profile. So in order to get the extension and say, this is a tiger, this is, this is not a tiger, this is not, this is not, but this is a tiger, etc. To get the extension, you need the gnomic profile. You need to identify first all the mammals, within the mammals, all those that are predators, without, and so on, and then you get the tigers. But once you have them, you have the pure extension just the extension, and then go go Lewisian nominalist and just take this extension as the property. Identify the extension with the, the property. Just stick a label to it, call it t tiger star or so, and it's stripped off the nomological profile, it's just that extension. And this is what you hand over to the omniscient being. So here's a property with, a, with an extension, here's another one with an extension, etc. Now, please, omniscient being, do a best system analysis for these extensions, which comes down, which is also the case for the Lewisian system, by the way, which comes down to telling us which extensions are proper, proper subsets of other extensions. Saying that all Fs are Gs is just saying that one extension is in the is a subset of the other ex extension. So we ask just the the omniscient being give us uh, subset relations and specify it in the best systematic uh, way. This we could still do, and if we are lucky, the omniscient being will tell us that the extension of tiger is within the extension of being a mammal. Maybe she comes up with, again, our 
the, the nomological profile that we guessed in our science. And the metaphysics behind it was correct. So in this way, you could still, you could solve this first problem. But it sounds very artificial to do that, right? There is a problem to, to save the better best system idea with this epicycle again. But I, I acknowledge that it's kind of contrived, uh, but there is a possibility to do it. I see. I, I don't really see why the omniscient being would care about our extensions. No, of course not. Yeah. I mean, this is all metaphor. that needs like your best system. Of course system. not. It's just, it's just a metaphor. It's just, uh, it's just um, if, if you, um, if you care about tigers and mammals, etc., uh, then there is uh, a matter of fact about them, and uh, and the world will have tigers and mammals, etc., will have it distributed, like the tables and chairs example. And if you care about these predicates, then there's a matter of, then there's a matter of fact about the dis distribution, and the omniscient being a metaphor just means. Matter of factually, they are such and such distributed, and uh, there might be regularities in these distributions. That's 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 all. And and I these are the, a the way to, to satisfy you, Peter. Okay. Can I go to the board? So, <laughs> so to be union is to be property first. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so, so I need to. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> To be union is to be property first. So if you're not union, of course you're not you're not property first. But let's imagine you're property first. I never read any paper on better system, so I'm, <laughs> I'm quite sure. impressed that there's so many people writing. Right? So what we saw in your talk is that the function you you try to minimize it's not this one. Okay, that's not true. That's not true because at no point you did that. Okay. The function that during all your talk was this one. Okay, P fix. That's bad because you don't, P is completely arbitrary. But just imagine that they take seriously property first and they do the work on the real one, this one. You try to, and you move P in a space of any kind of property set. You move, that will have a different distribution and different criteria. And you find the loss, but the loss now will be <coughs> a certain system for this variation. And of course, an omnipotent God can check function for any kind of set of properties with, with maybe supervenience or not. Or, and if C is rich enough, he or she, probably she, and what a being will find us. And maybe it's the one we are trying to approach in our division of labor. Yeah. But this is so abstract <laughs> because you need to vary sets of properties that will vary distribution, special temporal distribution. You have to buy space time already. That's all. Sure, the arena is space time. And can we define a, a set of criteria that is rich enough to do something that is valuable to be called lot? But the fact that during all the talk you were talking about this one, I think all the problems come from this because it's the fact that oh, this is arbitrary. This is completely, you know, you don't vary it, you fix it and you fix it and you fix it and you hope for the best. But of course, a real property first would say, okay, I have to be able to vary that. Lewis thought that it was not possible, so he said it's the natural one. We vary in our description of the natural one, but we will, there's an objective natural set. If you renounce to the natural set, I think you should vary that too and, and try to find the laws. Uh, yes and no. If, if you do, I mean, if your idea is here, um, take abundant properties. So any any set of entities is the extension of some property. So every every set is a property, so to speak. Every set of things is a property. Of course. 
Yeah, if you do that, you will have uh, the, the, the problematic properties like um, in Lewis's original, the, the F predicate. The, the predicate that is true of everything in our world. But one of the problems of, of, of Lewis was that his criteria was simplicity and strength. And fit. Okay, you might but, want to. But you might say, oh, okay, there's a, a good criteria system. Okay, maybe you want to solve that problem not with, uh, with the fixing set, the properties, but with the criteria. That that could be an option. That could be an option. Yeah. Okay, I see. But it's property first. If you disagree with property first, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's it. You're certainly, yeah. And uh, uh, on here, I mean. This you can write as, as you as, as you like. What I I meant um, with uh, for for Lewis p is a constant. It's perfectly natural, from, so it, it's not really a variable within the function. It's it's outside because it's fixed. What I when I put it in here into the function, it's it's a it's a kind of pseudo variable, so to speak. It's not something that you can constantly vary within a function. You, you have one property set and another property set. So uh, for, for a fixed property set, you can plug in each kind of fixed property set you, you like. You can, you can uh, adjust P as, as, you, as you like. But once you did, it's fixed within the, in the function. So you can either write it like that or, or, or but, but that just a lot of the problem comes from this set of fixed disciplines. Or well, yeah. Sorry, as I, as I as you acknowledge, described, you know, as I you, you gave sure you gave enough reason to say that okay, that maybe that was not a good idea to have a finite <laughs> set enough. here, a finite set. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it, is it, couldn't you just you know about you know, properties? You know, I'm not a human, but I think property first. That's uh, ontologically that's. Uh, that's uh, quite a defensible uh, metaphysics to have a metaphysics of instantiated properties. Uh, sure, it it, 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 it but, but then it's the 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 criteria of the C can only be applied in the context of the theory. Whether it's it's synthesized or not, uh, this could be uh, debated. You know, but I think you could apply the criteria of this balance of, of uh, to also theories that are not synthesized. I think that. Well, just thought, but I think that's that's possible. But the important thing, of course, is that the properties that are uh, mentioned in the context of the theory are real. They are real. I think the word natural is ambiguous. So I agree with the, with the, with the Peter. It exists in the important things that the properties are real. Because you, 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 you want, to, you know, there are tigers, you know, tigers, you know, this. Fine, if you have an extension view of predicates, but if the predicate is to be instantiated, there must be at least one tiger. Huh? And so, uh, whether it's a natural class or not, you know, that's you get into problems. It's complicated what's natural, what's not. You know, I think you could do that uh, uh, also. As you mentioned, we, with uh, with tables and chairs, and there, there are real chairs and there are real tables. And then you know, if you have a theory about yeah. tables yeah. and chairs, then why not? You know, you could have laws about tables and chairs. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm open to that. So again, yeah. I think you know, it's important for to have a, a reason account that you have real predicates uh, and uh, maybe not natural classes, but real predicates, and also theories. You, know, you need a, a set of of, uh, of uh, Universal general propositions which describe the universalities, but which are related one to each other. Otherwise, you don't have right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, let me pick out two two points of, of the, the, the many you you made. Um, the, the one one thing you said uh, <coughs> a, a properties first ontology um, is welcome even if you are not a Lewisian or can be welcome. Here it really depends on what kind of properties ontology you have. Yes. For for Lewis, it's it's in a way properties and their distribution first, but the properties are categorical properties and quadistic properties. For the dispositionalist, it's also properties first. Yes. Everything depends on the properties, but they are dispositional. Yes. So uh, the dispositionalist gets uh, their laws in a in a different way than Lewis gets his his laws. Of, of course, but yeah, uh, properties first ontology uh, uh, is 
That's what, what Lewis and the dispositionalists share in a, in, a, in a way, but they mean totally very different things by, by properties. And another important thing you said is that uh, indeed the criteria, where am I here? The, the criteria, simplicity, strength, for the pragmatists, others like um, others uh, that cognitive creatures like we are value um, because of our cognitive setup, it's maybe also aesthetic uh, uh, criteria we, we value, like symmetries and, and, and so on. So, so maybe for us, the criteria are not only simplicity, strength, but even others. And uh, you, you said what, what you said, what I find is, is correct as well, uh, which criteria might depend on our science. Maybe biology has different uh, values uh, and criteria uh, than physics. Yeah. That, that could, could well be. So the criteria are not once and for all fixed, but they are also a function, I say here, of the properties by which I mean of the, of the science, because I, I attach the, the property sets to certain sciences. So the criteria may be also uh, functions of, of, of P. That's uh, something you, you said, which I find quite, quite correct. Yeah, I mean, thank you very much for the talk. Uh, I'm, I'm confused, so I'm not sure I can put my, my worry clearly, but let's, let's maybe go to Conway's game of life. I think maybe, maybe that makes it quite clear. Yeah. Um, so it's a very simple world with just cells that can be on and off, just a few rules that govern the evolution of the system. But then when you start with a configuration, you let it run, and we can't help ourselves seeing macro level patterns like still lives that don't change over time, or blinkers, oscillators, yeah. gliders that seem to move yeah. diagonally. Yeah. Um, but so it, it seems that the way it seems that what, what we see is is a little thing that is moving on diagonal. And because there is this one thing moving on diagonal. We, 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 we put a circle around it and we say, this is an interesting thing, let's call it a glider. And here's a little square to buy two that to just stay static, doesn't change, so let's put a circle around that and call that a square. And so the, the properties we ultimately use in our higher level set to get to the rules, in, to the higher level rules, in a sense, were determined <laughs> by the rules themselves. So there's this, this uh, I, I worry about what comes first, and, in this whole picture. Unless you could say, I could, I could have started from different entities, higher level entities, I could have looked at triangles and, and, and other patterns, but, but those would not have given me any interesting goals. They wouldn't have told me as much about how this whole system is going to evolve. But then you would have to be playing merely, you know, uh, your competitive game between very different property sets. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the, the picture is, is, is very telling, um, the, the Game of Life uh, picture. And the, 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 the fundamental laws are quite clear, as you spelled them out. They are just uh, these cells, and whether it's filled or not filled, uh, depends on very few rules, how many there are uh, in, in the vicinity of the, of the single cell. Um, so these are the fundamental laws, and that's all you need to um, describe the whole mosaic of, of that. But then, strangely enough, um, real patterns emerge. Uh, but it's already there. You have, in fact, different levels. You have the level of just squares and gliders and uh, blinkers, etc. But they can be parts of even larger entities. So. I think you can build Turing machines with, with Conway's, but, but you can also uh, construct a, a, a printer which prints some, some um, um, letters, etc., or sentences. And within this huge, the, the printer, for example, you will have gliders and blinkers, etc., as sub, subsystems. And so you, you have different, different levels there as, as well. So that is, is a very nice picture of the BBSA plus my, my emergence picture, because there you will have this kind of supervenience of gliders on single cells and printers on gliders, etc. So you will have exactly what I spelled out for the world. 
um, uh, remind me of your, your question. What the, then, because there seems to be something problematic there. I wonder how you get to the interesting properties at the high ah, level. Okay. Um, how would you get to the notion of a yeah. liar? Only because you see, yeah, you see that there is this interesting higher level role. So, yeah, yeah. But, but that's that's exactly what we don't want. We want to start from a property set to then determine what the roles of the special sciences are. So it's, it's a, yeah. I see myself turning in circles here, and I, and I don't quite know where to. And of course, this is an epistemic worry, but but but, but it also connects to, to the metaphysics. Yeah, because. Mm. I, I I mean I I could I think I could say uh, what one way to look at it would would be to say yes uh, the the better best systems idea is is really a very pr pragmatic epistemic I idea first and it really depends on what is interesting for us human beings for some aliens. It might be totally different. They don't have biology, but myology, and they look at at a total different levels dis distribution. That that might well be the case, and I'm 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 happy, and and BBSA proponents can be happy with with that. It's just look at the interesting properties and predicates human beings have, but then do a, an objective, do it from an with through the lenses of these predicates do an omniscient calculation on, on that. That's, that's the only thing where metaphysics comes in, so to speak. But the starting point is very epistemic and very pragmatic. Um, and then we could, of course, um, uh, think metaphysically and ask ourselves whether there's also some matter of fact in, in nature that distinguishes these levels, whether there's a natural division be between them or not. And I, 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 I don't know, it seems to be the case, but it seems to be from my perspective to be the case, so I, I, I don't know uh, uh, whether that's, that's the case. So running around in circles um, de depends a bit uh, if you say it's a pragmatic decision human beings make or an epistemic decision, then that's the starting point and no running around in in circles. What well, if you don't want to do that? Yeah. If you don't want to do that, you either have to argue that nature comes equipped with different levels, or you say the whole thing is um, is useless. Uh, either go for dispositionalism or go for uh, the original Lewisian idea. Um, there are perfectly natural properties, and the rest is just a human pers perspective, but it doesn't um, capture anything in nature. It's that's just perspectival. These are two options. I guess there are more options, but these would be two options at least. Yeah, um, it's a question about your uh, what you said at some point about the hierarchy of uh, property sets. Um, this this sense of hierarchy is it something that you get. Um, as a result of your BSA analysis, so it's a bit epistemic, like nomicity, yeah. or is it something that is out there? Only? Is it a metaphysical dependence or something epistemic? I, yeah, I, I guess that's that's really something out there because this this I, this I, it's it's not. Here, science and our everyday practice, I think, and our, our normal world view are, are nicely in line, I think. Because even in ordinary life, we know that things are made out of parts. And in order to get a certain whole with certain functions, we have to take care about the, the correct parts and assemble them in the right way. So that's not only uh, something we encounter in science, that macroscopic entities are built of microscopic entities, and it's very important in which way they are built, but also in every that's our everyday life experience. And so I think that this is somehow true about the world itself, that there is this kind of macro-micro hierarchy. Um, so I, I guess I would think that this is uh, a true empirical observation. 
don't know, maybe it's an a priori picture of the world we have. I don't know. I, I, I would think that this is, this is an empirical matter of, of fact. In, in some computer games, that might not be the case. So a different world is imaginable where things don't have parts. They, they are just atoms in these computer games. Pac-Man, probably, very early computer games. There, there, there might just be Pac-Man and these <laughs> things Pac-Man eats, and that's, that's it. But it doesn't have parts. It can't. Yeah. So worlds without parts and without sub. Yeah, these hierarchies are imaginable, but our world seems to be different. Yes, but um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't see this as very compatible with the union uh, picture. This, this, this hierarchy not being the result of a best systems approach, but like already in the world. Uh, not that it's the best explanation for the way you observe things, like in the game of the 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 the, 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 the game of life. Uh, um, as you describe it, with a bit of printer creating and Turing machine and so on, that's uh, for us a different level, a different hierarchy, different in the hierarchy. But that's because that's the best system for us. Uh, um, and maybe like there are some ways that the world is that it makes it the best system. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But the hierarchy, if it's in the world, uh, then. That seems to be that uh, that uh, the relations that makes your supervenience works are also in the world, and so we have modal things in the world. And you see the point: uh, if if how can there be several levels of properties if you just have a mosaic of facts? It should be flat, right? I I, I guess that that could could be a critique of the. Uh, the Lewisian idea. I mean, Lewis worked with supervenience, and supervenience, especially nowadays, um, in, in times of grounding and, and thicker notions of dependence than supervenience, the Lewisian picture might sound might look very flat. But I think the ethos, at least, the idea even uh, behind Lewis was. Uh, well, no, there are there are table and tables and chairs. It's just that they supervene, but it doesn't mean that they are, they don't exist. It's uh, they tables and chairs do exist. But here's another fact about tables and chairs: they supervene on more fundamental things. Um, so it's. Uh, but the supervenience is the result of the best systems approach. No, uh, it's it's built on those laws. That are just a result of, of the best way to character to to to, to carve out the world in this. Uh, no. No. Uh, uh, it, it's a new solution to the um, uh, disunity of science when you draw the, the different circles, which were uh, overlapping a bit. This was the result of the competing BSA, right? This was an epistemic result. Yeah, um, well, um, hang on, I'm, I'm, I'm slightly con confused now. If, if we go to the original Lewisian picture, then the dependence of chemical laws and biological laws on the fundamental laws is, is different, is, is by deductive entailments um, and not by the way I told the, the story, not by separate BBSA uh, um, competitions. But it's merely that um, if you if you uh, stick in, if you have the Lewisian uh, best system and the fundamental laws, and you add certain bridge laws, uh, you say, uh, uh, and the tiger is this and this arrangement of molecules, then you might get tiger laws out of the fundamental laws plus this bridge law. So th there's there's deduction in, in, mm -hmm. in Lewis. And, and hence uh, uh, far more reduction in, in, in this way because you get deductions from the fundamental laws, ideally, if you have this, mm -hmm. these bridge laws. So in this sense, it's, uh, it's much, a much more flat uh, picture mm -hmm. in, 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 in this respect. Um, if we go 
better best system analysis, you at least have this um, normicity which is not dependent on, on, the, on the lower levels. But now I might have lost track a bit of the, the punch of your, of your question. I, I think that, uh, if I understood you correctly, is that uh, if you have relations at the uh, more fundamental level, so you say uh, that there are, at the more fundamental levels, there are uh, properties and relations between those properties. But those are relations between properties. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There are regularities, so there is a relation between properties. So there are uh, uh, laws at the fundamental level, and it is because you have those laws at the fundamental level that you have regularities, yeah. regularity that you have tables and chairs, that you have regularities uh, among uh, tables and chairs. But you don't have laws huh? because to have laws, you, you need to, to, to implement the best uh, system criteria. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but for Lewis, you, you, yeah. you have only internal relation in the mosaic, so you don't have real relations. So no hierarchical relations either, right? So it, for Lewis, in the mosaic, there's only internal relations. So the relations that we, we comparison between categorical, because if there's real relation with the with the, with the metaphysical status in the mosaic. There's a lot of problems later for Lewis later, and there's no emergence in Lewis. There's no the mosaic is yeah. pretty flat yeah. for Lewis. Yeah, you yeah. can describe it all you want with many levels, but the mosaic itself. Sure. Uh, I, I mean, with with the, the relations. When I said that uh, their microscopic objects have parts and they have properties, and the parts. What I meant is the parts then in in relations. And I would think that only spatiotemporal relations are fine. So the Lewisian kind of relations are, are fine. I just have to, to specify what kind of properties does this uh, table surface have, what kind of properties does the table's uh, legs have, and how do, do they stand in spatiotemporal relations to each other. And then I get the, the, the table. So I, I, at that point, I did not mean anything deeper, uh, but Spatiotemporal relations that would, would do between the parts. Yeah, just to continue, because you said that your answer is analogical to the Conway analysis, and I think if we take seriously Conway, maybe there's a way to get the real levels. Because in the Conway analysis and the Bodo notion of emergence, and David Mann applied that notion to biology. It's not arbitrary where you see a pattern. A real pattern is when you can reduce the program that produces a pattern. So, so you have uh, simple yeah. laws, but of course you have a lot of initial conditions. You, the program produces successful state, and a real pattern is not in our eyes. It's when you can objectively reduce the program to go to the glider, and you can prove that you can get to the glider. And for other configuration, you don't. You cannot reduce. So it's not, it's a bit much new because it's a program, but it's, it's, it's a rigid result of mathematics. Oh, good. Yeah. So you have emergence of something, but not necessarily emergence of properties. Yeah. It's, it's just emergence of the laws to get to the thing. So, so it's close to you. It's emergence of pattern, but not properties themselves. Okay, of course. Program can change the properties, but that's not the important thing. It's the program is shorter, more efficient, objective. Okay, thanks. And so if you not apply that to biology, I, I, don't, I didn't understand all the details of the bizarre Philip Man papers about life, but he said, oh, life is an optimal system that is efficient to do programmatic stuff. So he used a bit of, so, so it's a very specific notion of emergence. It's not emergence of properties, it's emergence of pattern, but the pattern are there because they will use okay, cool. the yeah. program. Yeah. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I see how it's not really the, the goal of the BBSA people that want to to show that there's a legitimacy to biology and chemistry and that we don't know, we don't know yeah. how algorithmic are these disciplines. Yeah. So the idea is that if you if you implement an ontology of gliders and others, you can 
you can pretty very much simplify your the, the description of every uh, history of the program. Yes, but, but for but certain configuration, so not for anything. But, is, but isn't that work that, that in order to be able to say that you should you should compare it to very different ways of, of trying to reduce the program, which will always involve very different ontologies. It wouldn't be an ontology of gliders anymore, it would be very different. But then, yeah. then we're comparing very different sets of checks, but that's possible here. So, so Bedeau, Bedeau, I can tell Bedeau, and you can answer for yourself, but Bedeau says, okay, that there's a, most of the time it's not possible. So the pattern you see, it's in your mind, mm -hmm. because these are not will not systematically reduce the length of the program to get to the to the description of states. But the one where it is, he says, okay, that's that's robust, that's something emergent in that sense. But I don't know for you because you have this uh, emergence of laws, but not emergence of properties. If I understand correctly, your notion. Um, no, not emergence of of of. Properties, but emergence of just, just the, the the laws because for for emergence I think for for a proper notion of emergence you have these uh, two um, um, Condition. conditions namely dependence and autonomy and for the for the properties they just supervene <laughs> so you don't have okay. not that much autonomy for 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 the for the property. But I see how here we can get an autonomy, namely in that um, in that it is robust in the sense you just described it. That um, uh, that you can, uh, yeah. It's a, it's a, as a, if I understood it correctly, it's a kind of um, a compression algorithm. Yeah. Is, is also possible there with those properties, and that gives those properties a higher standing yeah. um, than just uh, emerge, uh, sorry than just supervenience. They have the right to be in themselves because they are compressible. Um, so and that's that's nice. I have to. They have the. Of course, it's diachronic. So, like like laws for for you. Like, I understand that most of the laws you're thinking about are dynamic laws. And, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. But think that's that's helpful. I, I should uh, uh, go on to think in this direction. So time is up. Uh, please join me again in thanking our speaker.